building cooperation between domestic airlines in the form of interline agreements and code share may help eliminate flight delays and cancellations while also scaling up profits for airlines, especially in the post-COVID season. What role will local airlines, the global airline body, the International Air Transport Association, and the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority play to ensure that this becomes reality in Nigeria? This was the subject of discussion at a recent webinar in Lagos. Plus, airport firefighters in Nigeria join their counterparts to mark the International Firefighters Day, which holds on the 4th of May every year. That's the program's preview. A warm welcome to Vision this week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumbi. Let's get on board. The International Air Transport Association estimates that travel measured in revenue passenger kilometers will recover to 43% of 2019 levels over the year. For the global airline body, this is a 26% improvement on 2020, but far from a recovery. ITA predicts that domestic markets will improve faster than international travel. Here in Nigeria, passengers in the domestic terminal, as they strive to complete their boarding processes, Although air traffic is gradually rising after the lull posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, it's also not the easiest of times as long flight delays and cancellations persist. The flight has been rescheduled from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Though I will wait. As far as that's the only means of transport that it will take me to Kano simply. By road, road is not good. I miss Peace Airline, and there was no alternative. I had to suspend and rebook the next day. And reason, I came instead of one hour, 30 minutes before the booking time. It's apparent airlines are not taking advantage of the rise in passengers' traffic to increase flight frequency and make more money. That's simply because airline operators are still battling with situations beyond their immediate control. Phase of incessant five hours, nine hours, even 12 hours delay by the domestic airlines. Domestic airlines are numbering 21 right now, and they are growing. And they subjected passengers to untold hardship. Poor on-time performance is a pointer to two things. One, inadequate fleet. Two, depleting fleet. Those affecting turnaround, posing safety and consumer protection questions. Is either the flight, the aircraft are not enough, or the fuel they have is dropping. So turnaround becomes possible. To mitigate this challenge, the idea for domestic airline interline is gaining ground. An interline flight is an agreement between airlines to coordinate passengers with an itinerary that uses multiple airlines without having to check in again or deal with their baggage at the stopover. Airline cooperation, you have interlining, coach share agreement, uh, alliance, joint ventures. Uh, and all this can be found in a single market. They can be found, in, there, are, there are things that you find, a uh, type of transaction and uh, engagement you find among airlines all over the world. Then the second level uh, of cooperation among airlines is code sharing. Uh, code sharing is, a, is more intense, uh, it's more robust, uh, that a little bit uh, loose interlining. And then uh, that is um, among two airlines sharing their letter code for one another's flight. In the past, Air France interlined with defunct Bellevue and Aero. Since then, domestic airlines have shied away from it as a result of many bottlenecks and challenges associated with the arrangement that experts believe are surmountable. We need to have the basic, that the revenue management and pricing. And then all this go into the, into the legal framework I'm going to talk about. Then you have to have a, set, a, a settlement system integrated. The basic thing 
why many of these allies don't talk to, uh, to each other in Nigeria is because they are not sure of the settlement and how they should go about it. Uh, how am I sure that I'll get my money if I take your passenger? Uh, those are some of the things that need to, that makes it uh, easy. Now, if you're talking of settlement, IATA has a system called the IATA Claim House and that have been there for several years. The country's airline industry remains competitive because of proliferation of airlines for a small pool of market, which comes with lots of empty seats when aircraft doors are closed. What are the kinds of things one can do to maximize and optimize the capacity you put on the right? One of them in our domestic uh, market is to consider the template of a code share interlining agreement. Is it a viable option in this market, in this market that we are in? I would contend that yes, it is, given everything everybody has, has said ahead of me. And the primary reason for that is self-fulfilling. If you get into a code share or interline agreement, you can actually see exactly how many more seats you're filling as a result of the code share. NCAA is encouraged to use policy instruments and institute pooling, as stated in the Aviation Act, which refers interlining code sharing among the carriers in order to guarantee passenger comfort. Interlines and code sharing are important for airline survival and may not take place without some form of regulatory support. If we're able to do interlining well, and we get from there into code share, you are preparing yourself that you're a, you a good candidate for an alliance, you don't, those big alliances, because you have a track record. Let's take advantage of what we can do on the domestic op operation. And having those experiences, now let's turn the West African sub-region into a domestic operation. So you can start to fly from Lagos, not just within Nigeria now, to Accra, Ghana, to uh, go, go, go to Sierra Leone, go to Abidjan, go to their own inner country where they have the airport and go from any of the airports in Nigeria, there will be a domestic corporation. That's the beauty. That's where Nigerian airlines will, 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 will turn the corner. We are going to beg the DG and the Minister of Aviation that all this will let us dismantle all those basal requirements on domestic corporation. Satan is there. Work on Satan. Meanwhile, Dana Air and Ibom Airline are on the last phase of the interline project that may set the tone of cooperation for other domestic airlines. One of the participants at the webinar is the Director General of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, Captain Musa Nuhu. His presentation takes up with praise for the proposed Dana Ibom Air Interline Agreement. He adds that the regulatory body looks forward to see Nigerian carriers dominate the West African region with this kind of relationship. I must really thank uh, Judge Racy, the last speaker, uh, for giving this good news of the arrangements they're making for the first inter-airline uh, agreement in Nigeria between domestic operators. Fingers across. We really hope this uh, succeeds and shows the other airlines the way to go. And as you said, we look at uh, the airline for the, uh, the uh, agreement for the, without any regulatory action. This is the way it's supposed to be. The airlines are supposed to manage their business properly, have good corporate manage, uh, governance, and come up with beautiful ideas like this that will really uh, grow the uh, industry. As regards to the uh, regulatory body participation, yes, we do have some responsibilities. These agreements between airlines are business decisions based on models run by the airlines. It is not a regulatory function, but I think we all agree today that uh, some smart regulations and some policies can induce and encourage uh, these uh, agreements between the airlines and it has several benefits, both for the airlines and also the passengers. Air transport is becoming the important and critical form of transportation in Nigeria. This has thrown a lot of challenges and opportunities for the air transport industry. If we can use this, we can really grow and develop the industry and grow our passenger figures. I don't see why 
a country of 200 million people, we cannot have 20, 30 domestic passengers in Nigeria. And airline, inter airline, and uh, code sharing, or whatever agreements between the various airlines, surely, surely is a major way to go to do that. Uh, one of the major rules for the NCA is the protection of the passenger rights. Such, uh, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Regulations Part 19 uh, deals with the issue of consumer protection regulations and other relevant uh, Nigerian uh, Civil Aviation Regulations for the safety of passengers and protection of passenger rights and uh, obligations. Uh, we are the uh, Civil Aviation Authority will always encourage and work with all the airlines. Those who want to cooperate, the airlines need to work, have the political will between themselves, willing to work together. Then we can encourage that and help them cross any hurdle as to uh, get this, uh, uh, for this sort of agreements to become a commonplace uh, between the Nigerian airlines. And Nigerian airlines need to start putting their resources together with the coming of the single air, African air transport uh, market. If we don't pull our resources together, the stronger, uh, the more we get united, we are the stronger we, are, we can be able to significantly face competition for other stronger airlines uh, on the continent. And and it's Nigeria has the market. We must put our resources together to exploit the benefits of our market. We can sit down, then the Ethiopians, the Kenyans, and others come and take everything from our market. Body of the airlines in Nigeria, I think they really need to work within themselves, try and get the airlines to start working and cooperating with each other. It makes them much more efficient, much more effective, and it saves them costs in many, many areas of not only the Nigerian market. I don't see why the Nigerian airlines do not dominate, not only the Nigerian market, but the West and Central African markets, a region of 600 million people. If we dominate this region easily, we have the right policies, right airlines with the right management in place, we could easily have 50, 60 million passengers annually, which will be a big boost uh, to the Nigerian airlines. With the aviation sector in tatters due to the COVID-19 pandemic, young French people are massively turning away from flight crew schools and ground staff trainings. A small class is in session as Catherine Tastavine, a flight attendant of 40 years turned trainer, sees registration fall by an estimated 75% at the flight attendant school she founded. My first question was, is it really worth it to enroll for the flight attendant training? Since there are less flights and there were many layoff, notably with Air France, which is what we hear of most. She reassured us immediately and told us that hiring had already resumed. There's actually someone in the class who told me she has a friend just hired by an airline company. Total passenger traffic dropped by 60% worldwide in 2020, as estimated by the International Civil Aviation Organization, as French national carrier Air France also suffered a 7.1 billion euros loss over the same year, prompting the company to lay off 8,500 of its employees. While Airbus announced 5,000 redundancies for France alone, for some students of the school, these are daunting times and no job optimism. Global passenger traffic numbers are not expected to go back to pre-COVID-19 levels before 2024 according to the International Air Transport Association. But Catherine remains optimistic for her students. Now I see that all of those I am training now and was training in January are people who are really motivated and want to be in that line of work and nothing else. For them it's about the planes before all else. 
Some of my students unfortunately could not be pilots. They started their training and they could not keep going because it is full and it is also expensive, way more than the training for flight attendant. So they are thinking, as long as we have a foot inside the planes, we are happy. Catherine and her students hope younger and perhaps less costly flight attendants will progressively replace the older generation as the health situation returns to normal. When Evasion This Week returns, a peep into a land restaurant operated by flight attendants of South Korean Air. Do join us again. Welcome to the Jeju Airland restaurant as a South Korean flight attendant places a meal list on the table. All the flight attendants dish up in-flight meals on land for travel-staffed customers in Seoul. They serve up popular meals including bulgogi rice and black pork rice along with drinks at the cafe called Jeju Air on the table which opened on Thursday, April the 29th and will run until July the 28th. Visitors said the experience was like being in flight with a restaurant decked out with a boarding gate, mock plane windows and attendants providing a souvenir boarding pass. I came here to remind myself it feels like I am actually in a flight as I am having this meal, in this atmosphere and interior design. It also tastes the same as I would add in the flight, which is great. I only need to take the subway or bus and pay about 10,000 won to enjoy an in-flight meal and the joy of travel. It's really good and a reasonable price. In South Korea, about 39.4 million passengers used domestic and international flights in 2020, which is a decrease of 68.1% compared with the previous year. That's statistics from the Korea Civil Aviation Association. Now to Thailand, where the Bangkok's Suvan Bumi Airport has converted part of its check-in terminal into a COVID-19 vaccination center. The 42 check-in counters on the fourth floor of the facility are now processing vaccinations for airport staff, airline staff and immigration officials instead of airplane tickets. The venue opened for vaccinations on Monday, April the 26th and is overseeing 1,000 vaccinations a day. The airport is in the process of preparing the facility to open to the public for vaccinations depending on government directives. The government recently ordered parks, gyms, cinemas and daycare centers in its capital, which is the epicenter of the latest wave of infections, to short till May 9. Airport firefighters gather this small ceremony to mark the International Firefighters Day. The day is celebrated on the 4th of May every year and is set aside to honor the work and sacrifice by firefighting experts. Respect is also paid to professionals who have lost their lives in the line of duty. Top officials of the airport agency note the importance of this set of professionals. In the event of emergency, we need the firefighters to come out and perform. And before the emergency, we need them to be in top shape. We need them to be competent. We need them to be fully aware of their responsibilities and trained. So that training aspect is what comes up when you're talking about the simulator. The simulator is here for all of us to benefit from. The fire people and fan and aviation in general, we tend to be much more aware of it and appreciative of the initiative and the equipment because we are on the field. We have over 90 and we are trying to procure at least 20, that is part of the plan now, at least 20 more. Because some are aged, some are due for refurbishment, so the new ones will replace the ones that we feel we are going to phase out. Firefighters remain a critical part of airport or aircraft rescue that threatens life property and the environment.
Arik Air says it has reintroduced flights from the Namdi Azikwe Airport Abuja to Maiduguri, the Borno State capital, with effect from May. Airline passengers traveling from Lagos can also connect to the service from Abuja. In April, the airline announced the resumption of direct flights from Lagos to Kano. From May the 1st, Delta Airlines has resumed selling all its seats on board its aircraft, the last major airline to institute load factor caps in all cabin classes on every aircraft. Delta has now joined its pairs in booking its flight for. The airline cites an improving public health situation combined with a growing airline recovery as a major factor responsible for the removal of block seats after a year of doing so. Expensive PCR tests could dissuade travelers from boarding flights and hurt airlines' recovery. That's coming from the International Air Transport Association. A PCR test would increase the cost of an average airfare by 45 to 90 percent on a one-way ticket, with costs ballooning for two PCR tests on a return trip. This could severely impact family travel. At an online media briefing, the Director General of IATA, Mr. Willie Walsh, said the real risk here is that this prohibitive course will prevent families from exercising their freedom to travel, to visit friends and to take a holiday, thereby impacting on airline recovery. This is the Anambra International Airport launched in 2017 as the Umeri Cargo Airport project with an estimated cost of over 2 billion naira. The airport is now open for a test flight on its 3.7 kilometers runway. The plane I land An airpiece aircraft lands on the facility with its chairman as the first passenger. I shed tears when I landed here because nobody ever believed that this day will come. This is one of the fastest airports to be approved, even for a test flight. What we have here is the best way, the best runway in Africa, the widest runway ever to be built. This runway could land a 777, could land an Airbus 380, that is the biggest planes. This is the first time an airline, in, I mean an airport in Nigeria will be doing a test run with a 737. This airport is not going to serve only Anurabha people is going to serve not only the entire southeast but the entire country and then, and the world at large for the state governor willie obiano a 30 year old dream has become reality with hopes that the airport would expand the economic frontiers of the state the anambra international passenger and cargo airport is the most audacious legacy of my administration and perhaps the most revolutionary too Experts tell me that our airport has set a record in aviation industry as the fastest and the most modern airport to be built in recent times. This airport took 15 months to build. Construction began in late January 2020 and here we are 15 months after witnessing the first flight into the airport. It took only one year and three months of demonstration, perseverance, and courage in the face of danger to build this airport. A decoration of the crew follows. Commemorate this very remarkable day for this very feat that has been achieved, and I'm sure for their contribution in making sure that this has become a reality. This day for both the governor the new airport is located on a 1,500 acres of land at Umeri. It has a four-story terminal building with shops, a 10-floor control tower, and a car park that can accommodate 750 vehicles and is expected to host an aviation fuel and aircraft maintenance facility, an airport hotel, a business park, and an international convention center. That's our menu this week. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Bukola Joe Okitumbi.